coming to our next speaker, who has been transcending for a very, very long time and transcending as an innovator, not just for the sake of creating a device or uh, not necessarily just for the idea of coming up with something new, but specifically looking into the ways that patients, people who have suffered some degree of discomfort and have a desire to, to overcome that, to, to transcend that. Our next speaker has spent a lot of time looking into that. While he was still in the land of his birth in Iran, he developed the first modular patient care monitoring system in the whole nation. And he's gone on to develop a system that enables those who are not able to move their bodies to be able to use other parts of their body, other parts of what they still have intact to, to transcend. And so I'd like you to join me in welcoming Mesam Gonvalu. He's going to present to us the tongue, a new human computer interface. Welcome. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to tell you about a technology we have uh, developed uh, in Georgia Tech uh, Bionics uh, Lab. Uh, with the name of uh, Tongue Drive uh, System. So there are uh, some unfortunate events that uh, happen on a daily basis. It could happen to any of us, hopefully not. But if it does, these events, uh, such as falls, accidents, uh, some acts of violence, uh, they either lead to death or they might lead to some severe disabilities. And one type of these disabilities, which I will talk about specifically today, is spinal cord injury. So with a spinal cord injury, depending on where the injury happens, everything below that level, below the level of injury, every part of the body become completely paralyzed. And if it happens, for example, in the lumbar or thoracic uh, part of the spinal column, it results in a condition called uh, paraplegia, which means that you cannot move your legs, you cannot feel anything in your legs, and you will be wheelchair bound. Uh, think of it as you wake up one day and you have pins, or pins and needles in your legs. You cannot stand up. You cannot go to the bathroom. But unfortunately, the part of the spinal cord that is the weakest part and least protected is the neck, is, is basically the cervical part of the spinal cord. And most of the spinal cord injury happen in the cervical part. That result in another condition called tetraplegia, which means that you can neither move your hands nor your feet. And just imagine what it means to live with this condition for the rest of your lives. Some of these individuals cannot even breathe on their own. They, they need a ventilator to breathe. So something we take you for granted, they, they need a machine to assist them with something as simple and non-trivial, non but for us, we don't think about it every day as breathing. So the question is how to uh, Im improve the quality of life for these individuals. And in the United States, there are 54 million people today living with some sort of disabilities. Out of this population, a quarter of a million have severe spinal cord injury, tetraplegia. And, out of the, and every year, 11,000 new cases add to this quarter of a million people. The sad truth about these numbers is that 55% of people with high-level spinal cord injury are between the ages of 16 and 30 years old because young people do what young people do and they, they get into accidents, falls, and so on and so forth. And you can think these people, because everything else about their brain and their body is normal, just the connection is broken. And they need lifelong special care for the rest of their lives. You can imagine what a financial, emotional, and productivity cost this is to the person, to their families, and to the society as a whole. 
So we ask how we can improve the quality of life for these individuals, for these young and adults and some olders uh, who uh, need assistance. How can we improve their level of independence? And we found the answer in the tongue part of our body that we don't appreciate it as much as we should. If you look at the cross section of the uh, human brain, uh, something called homunculus, you see that the area in the brain, in the motor cortex, that is dedicated to tongue and mouth actually rivals the area that is dedicated to hand and fingers. This is why I can talk, this is why we can eat, and this is why you can touch every single tooth in your mouth with the tip of your tongue without concentrating or thinking about it very rapidly. And that's the power of tongue that we are tapping into. Tongue has even more benefits. It's directly connected to the brain. So even those people with the highest level of spinal cord injury cannot breathe on their own because they, the diaphragm is innervated to the brain through the spinal cord, but tongue has a direct connection to the brain. So everybody with the highest level of spinal cord injury, they can still move their tongue like me and you. So we developed this technology called Tongue Drive System. So now, uh, John Key, one of the students in GT Bionics lab, is uh, wearing the tongue drive system. Uh, and the tongue drive has, consists of a tiny little magnet on the tongue. I don't know if you can see it. So this magnet creates a magnetic field that, because the human tissue is transparent to magnetic field, can be sensed around his mouth, her mouth. And we have put magnetic sensors on this headset that can track the tongue motion, which is sent wirelessly to a smartphone. The smartphone converts the changes in the magnetic field to particular commands, and then those commands go to the wheelchair. This is why she can move the wheelchair simply by moving her tongue. If you can see the tongue motion by touching these particular positions in the tongue, we can define uh, commands to substitute mouse, to access computers, to drive wheelchairs, so on and so forth. And we have attached the magnet to the tongue on a temporary basis using glue, but for long-term attachment of the magnet to the tongue, we have basically used a tongue piercing or tongue stud. <laughs> and this is arguably the first medical application of tongue piercing. <laughs> so we have done clinical trials at the Shepherd Center here in Atlanta and Rehab Institute of Chicago with support from National Institute of Health. And uh, we are now working on a new a version of this technology to put everything inside the mouth in the form of a dental retainer so that you would see nothing on the outside because individuals with high level disability, they are very conscious about their appearance. So that headset will also disappear in the near future. Thank you very much. Phenomenal. Thank you very much. Thank you.